Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today we're going to discuss the Sterling Submachine Gun magazine. The Sterling magazine was designed by George Patchett and is arguably one of the finest submachine gun magazines ever designed. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at the Sterling magazine. In May 1946, George Patchett patented a new curved magazine, which would become one of the Sterling's most recognisable features. George Patchett's machine carbine, that came to be known as the Sterling, had been initially designed to use the standard Sten magazine. This makes complete sense, as not only was the Sten's mag readily available, but it stood to reason that the British Army would prefer to retain the large number of magazines that they already had in store. The Sten's magazine, however, is the gun's weakest link. It was a double-stack, single-feed, 32-round magazine, which was difficult to load and fed unreliably when it was not looked after. The Patchett machine carbine prototype performed well during its initial testing in 1943. Later, sand, mud and arctic testing against various other submachine guns highlighted the limitations of the Sten mag, regardless of the weapon it was used in. At some point in 1945, Patchett developed a series of new magazines, including a 20-round patrol mag, a 40-round standard magazine and a 60-round assault magazine. But by late 1946, these had all been superseded by a 35-round magazine designed to fit into the basic pouch of the British Army's 1944 pattern web equipment. Excuse this brief interruption guys, I just wanted to ask you to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss future videos. We need all the help we can get to overcome YouTube's algorithms. So please drop us a like and if you have any questions about the video, please leave us a comment and we'll happily answer them. This all helps new people discover our videos. Similarly, as I always say, please share the videos with friends. Tab owes many of our viewers to those who share the videos on social media, in forums, and with anyone who might be interested. Tab is an entirely viewer-supported project, so if you'd like to support the channel further, check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to follow us over on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. Right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Patcher addressed the Sten magazine's shortcomings by designing his own magazine, with a curve which allowed the slightly tapered 9x19mm rounds to feed more reliably. He also replaced the traditional magazine follower with a pair of rollers, which minimised friction and allowed dust, grit and dirt to be rolled out of the way, thus improving reliability. Patchett's magazine was designed so that it could be economically stamped from sheet metal and folded and spot welded together into shape. As you can see here, it was simple to disassemble for cleaning and required no tools. By 1951 the magazine had been largely perfected, but a trials report suggested that the magazine's feed lips needed to be reinforced. Despite this, the Sterling was said to be better than all other weapons tested. We'll cover the Sterling's development, testing and adoption in a future video, but the L2A1 Sterling was eventually adopted in the summer of 1954. In 1952, Patchett added a pair of strengthening ribs to the inside of the magazine, which also further reduced friction on the rollers. He also replaced the oval follower spring with a more efficient circular one, with the strengthening ribs acting to hold it in place. The final production magazines held 34 rounds, and was substantially easier to load than the previous Sten mags. The L2A1 or Mark II, introduced in 1954, was the first Patchett machine carbine, soon to be known as the Sterling submachine gun, to incorporate the angled magazine housing, which improved feeding reliability from the Patchett's patented curved double stack double feed magazine. The Sterling's magazine housing was angled forward slightly at an 82 degree angle. The magazines used by the British military differed from Patchett's original design. The British government, perhaps unwilling to purchase the rights to manufacture Patchett's design, developed the magazine L1A2. Nearly two million of these were built by Matoy, Rolls Razor, ROF Fazakali, and Woolwich Royal Laboratories. 
the L1A2 was slightly simpler to manufacture, but retained Patchett's roller follower, while the magazine body was made from two rather than four pieces of stamped steel, which were electrically welded together. The government design magazine was 5 centimeters or 2 inches longer than the Sterling produced magazines. This example is Sterling made and is marked with the company's name and pattern numbers. We can see the folded sheet metal construction and the overlaps at the rear of the magazine body. Both the commercial and government made magazines performed well, requiring relatively little maintenance. With this inert round we can see how the cartridges would have sat on the rollers. As a side note, when Canada adopted the C1, a modified version of the Sterling, they dispensed with Patchett's roller system and designed their own magazine, which held 30 rather than 34 rounds. Despite internal differences, the C1's magazine can be used in all Sterling pattern guns. Ok, let's take a closer look at how the magazine interacts with the weapon. On the front of the magazine is an over-insertion stop built into the edge of the magazine body. At the rear is another magazine stop with a flat spring, which is designed to limit rattle and helps to properly align the magazine in the breech for optimal feeding. With our patented Swiss pointing device we can see the base of the magazine catch, which interfaces with the magazine. The magazine release button is wide and quite ergonomic, and we can see from this angle how the magazine housing is angled forward. The information for this video is based on the research I did for my first book on the Sterling submachine gun. If you're interested in the Sterling and would like a copy of that, you can pick one up over on my other website, historicalfirearms.info. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Sterling magazine, arguably one of the weapon's most important features. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Sharing the videos with friends really helps us. You can also support us via Patreon or coffee.com with donations. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.